This device was almost illegal where I live. Recently, the government of Canada proposed banning Flipper Zeros in an attempt to curb car hacking thieves. This got me wondering, can you even hack into a car with a Flipper Zero? And if you could, would banning them make any difference? In this video, I'll demonstrate the basic replay attack that Flipper Zeros can pull off to unlock some cars. I'll also show you how you can build out your own test target at home using an aftermarket keyless entry system, and how you don't actually need a Flipper Zero to perform this attack, and can instead build your own replay device using a Raspberry Pi and software-defined radio. Let's get started by learning how these replay attacks actually work. Most keyless entry systems communicate over radio frequency, or RF. When you push a button on the key fob, it sends a broadcast out over a specified frequency that the car is tuned to listen in on. If the car is within range, it will receive the message. If you actually demodulate and decode this broadcast, you would see that it's just a string of ones and zeros or binary. Inside of this message includes the command being sent to the car, such as to unlock or lock. Of course, this broadcast is sent out into the air, so anyone or anything within range could also listen to it and potentially record it. In older cars, and the cheaper aftermarket keyless entry system we'll be demoing later in this lesson, a unique identifier is hard-coded into the key fob that is also paired with the receiver in the car. When the key fob sends out a message to a vehicle, it includes its unique identifier inside of it, and the vehicle then checks this message to make sure it matches its own before performing any commands or actions such as unlocking the vehicle. This is what prevents other key fobs from not opening up cars that they shouldn't. Since this identifier is hard-coded, this means that a message for something like an unlock does not differ over time or between key presses. This makes a system vulnerable to a replay attack. An attacker with a listening device could listen in for the unlock message being sent and record this broadcast to be replayed at a later time. They could then return and replay this message over the air to unlock the vehicle. This is the replay attack we'll be demoing in this video. Let's take a look at how I set up the keyless entry system to practice on. I picked up this aftermarket keyless entry system on Amazon and it's actually very straightforward to wire this up outside of a car on a test bench so we have something to demo or practice the replay attack. Like a lot of components inside of a modern car, it runs off of 12 volts. So I also picked up this 12 volt power supply here. It's this one right here. And one of the reasons I selected this one is it does have an adapter on it with a terminal breakout so that it's easier to wire up without needing to splice or solder the power supply wiring. I also have these two terminals here, one for 12 volts and one for ground. And this is just to make the wiring easier and so I don't have to do any soldering. So these keyless entry systems are fairly straightforward. They come with the receiver module, a wiring harness, and then of course the key fob for doing the locking and unlocking. Inside of the receiver module, there's two relays, one for the lock and unlock. And when we push the lock or unlock button, then it fires those relays, you can hear them closing. So what I've done is I've just wired this up actually as it would be in most cars. I've put 12 volts to the input of those relays. That's these yellow wires here. And then the white wires are the output of those relays. And I've actually, instead of wiring them up to what would be the motors for locking and unlocking, I've just put them into this breadboard and then wired them to two LEDs so we can see when they turn on and off. If you're looking to wire this up yourself, you don't necessarily actually need to use the LEDs because you will get a fairly audible click from the relays. So you can actually tell uh, when it's actually receiving the message and if your replay attack was successful just by listening for that click. So what I'll do is I'll throw up a wiring uh, diagram and table on the screen right now here if you want to pause it. And you could use this to wire it up if you wanted to purchase these and wire it up yourself. Also throw some links down to each of these products in Amazon below and also a more detailed blog that goes through how you can wire this up should you want to do it yourself. Before we continue with the video, a very important announcement. The Black Friday discounts at TCM are live now. From today until December 2nd, you can get 20% off all certification vouchers and 50% off your first payment to the Academy. In addition, we have some special never seen before bundles on sale and discounts for our two upcoming live trainings, the popular Attacking and Defending Active Directory and our brand new SOC Level 1 Live. 
seats to these trainings fill up quickly. So if you're interested, make sure to act fast. If you've been thinking of taking a TCM certification like the PNPT, or upping your skills with the hundreds of hours of courses on the Academy, you won't want to miss out on the sale. Now that we have an understanding how this system works, let's take a look at how we can do this replay attack with a Flipper Zero. It's actually very straightforward. So I just have the standard firmware here and we'll go into sub gigahertz because that's the frequency actually that the key fob broadcasts at. So we'll go sub gigahertz and then we're just going to go read here and then I'll, I'll hit the unlock here and you can see that it automatically actually picks picks that up here. And we can just hit the, uh, can go back to the config here and then we can go send. And what I'll do is let's bring it down here so we can see and we'll do a send here. And you can see that it immediately actually does the unlock because it's replaying uh, that same unlock message that we just copied. However, you definitely do not need a flipper zero for uh, this attack. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll set this to the side and then let's take a look at the parts we'll need to actually just do this with a Raspberry Pi Zero and an SDR. To build your own sub gigahertz replay device, we will need a few items. So the first one is a Raspberry Pi and I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W in this lesson, just cause it's the cheapest one. However, you can use any device from 2B up. So if you have a 2B, a three or a four, you can also use that. I've also got an SD card with the Raspberry Pi OS or Raspberry Pi operating system loaded on it. I won't be going over how to do that in this video because it's very straightforward and there's a lot of good guides on the internet. I'd suggest the Getting Started Guide by Raspberry Pi. The next item we've got here is the SDR. So that stands for Software Defined Radio and I'm using the RTL SDR. I'll put a link for this down below. And then I've got an antenna here to attach to it just to make the range extend a bit. Uh, if you don't have an antenna, then you can actually still get away without one, but you'll need to hold the key fob very close to it. So just keep that in mind. Because the Raspberry Pi Zero just has a micro USB uh, adapter into it, I'm going to need this adapter to break out to regular USB. So that's what I'm using this for to plug the SDR in. And then I've just got a power cable to power it. So then finally, optionally, we're going to be broadcasting off of the GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. And if you do want to extend the range for that, you can just use a wire and plug it in. So the GPIO pin that it actually is going to transmit off of is GPIO 4, which is the fourth one down from the left. If you're looking at it from the top, that's where the SD card is. So you can attach a wire here and this will extend its range. However, just so you're not causing interference, I would suggest actually just running it without one if you're going to be doing it locally. Uh, you still should be able to get about five feet of range without that. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly put this all together here and then we can hop over and SSH into it. Now that I'm SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi, we'll need to install some tools and drivers. We'll start with the ones for the RTL SDR and I'm going to follow the instructions in their quick start guide. So to do that, we'll just copy and paste these commands from the getting started on Linux section all the way down to here. And then we just need to reboot our device. To save you from watching me copy and paste these commands, I'll just run through them now and I'll see you when they're done. I'm finished with the installation steps and just did a quick reboot of the Raspberry Pi. The last thing I'd suggest is just to run a quick test to make sure that the Raspberry Pi is able to communicate properly with the SDR. To do that, there's actually a test utility that's included with the RTL software, and we can run that by RTL underscore test. And you should see that it finds one device, and if you're using the same one as me, it should be this RTL SDR blog. And then you'll notice down here, it is reading these samples in async mode. If it's working properly, you should just see nothing here. So what we can do is hit control C to quit it after we let it run for a couple seconds. And we should see that it has zero samples per million loss. So mine's working properly. The last step we'll need to do now to set up our device is actually to install the software that's going to allow our Raspberry Pi to transmit a radio frequency or a bro broadcast a message. So the reason we need to do this is because these less expensive SDRs like the one we are using are actually only able to receive. They aren't able to transmit. So what we're going to be using is we will use the SDR for the first half, half of the replay attack where we're going to save the broadcaster message from the key fob. And then after we save it, we'll then need to play it back or transmit it. And to do that, we're going to be making use of some software that can be installed on the Raspberry Pi to allow it to transmit over its GPIO pins. 
So that software is available on GitHub and I'll link this down below. So what we'll do is we'll just run through the installation steps here. So I'll just copy them over and paste them in here and we'll just run through these. I'll see you over when mine's done cloning. Perfect, mine's done cloning. So I'll just run the installation script here. My installation is completed, so we can just run a quick reboot now and we'll be ready to run through this replay attack. I've got my hardware all set up and we're now ready to perform the replay attack. If you're following along with the commands at home, just make sure to take note that I'm running them all from the rpytx directory. So the first step we'll need to do is to record a capture of the key fob sending an unlock transmission or command. To do that, we'll use the SDR and the RTL underscore SDR tool that we just installed. So the command for that is RTL underscore SDR, and then we'll need to pass in a few parameters. So the first one is the sample rate, and I found a sample rate of 250,000 works very well for this SDR. And then we'll also need to pass in the gain with dash G, and I found a gain of 35 works well as well. The last parameter we'll need to pass in is the frequency that we want to take a recording at. And this is actually the frequency of whatever device we're trying to capture. So for us, for this key fob, it's 433.92 megahertz. So to do megahertz, we'll go E6. And if you're not sure what the frequency is of the device that you're trying to capture, one easy way is to consult the manual of it. So in the manual of this key fob, it has it listed out. Alternatively, if you do some Googling and are able to find the FCC ID of the device, you can usually find the frequency that way as well. For most key fobs, they are going to be at or right around the 43 0.92 megahertz frequency. So that's what we'll tune to here. The very last parameter that we need to pass in is just the name of the file that we want to save this capture to. So for me, I'm going to call it key fob underscore cap and the file type is IQ. So we'll hit enter here to start recording. And once we see that it's reading samples, then we'll just need to press the unlock on the key fob a couple of times here. So I'll do mine twice just for good measure. And then we can hit control C to just cancel or stop this. So now what we can do is we'll just use the RPYTX tools to replay this transmission back. So the command for that is going to be sudo and it's dot slash. There is a send IQ commands and we'll need to pass in the same parameters that we did when we were recording this. We'll need to tell the sample rate. So that's 250,000. And then we'll also need to specify the frequency. So again, that's 433.92 megahertz. We will specify in the type as U8, and then we'll need to pass in the file name with dash I, and we called it key fob underscore capture. And then we can hit enter, and then this will transmit out that capture and replay it. And then when it replays, we see it unlocking twice. So that's how we can perform this replay attack using the Raspberry Pi and SDR. At this point, you may be thinking, this is too easy, and there's no way this would work on a real car. And you'd be mostly correct. Modern cars, and we're talking within the last 20 plus years, have additional security on their keyless entry system to prevent things like the basic replay attack we just demonstrated. One common method is the use of rolling codes. Instead of using a single hard-coded identifier that the key fob transmits for the car to verify, an algorithm and seed value are used to generate what are called rolling codes. When a button on the key fob is pressed, it generates the current rolling code, and this is transmitted to the car. The car is paired with a matching algorithm and seed value so it can generate the current rolling code and verify this against the one that the key fob sent. If they match, it performs the action that was requested, such as unlocking. The next time a button is pressed on the key fob and a message is sent, it generates the next rolling code, which the car will also use. This prevents replay attacks, because as long as the car receives a message from the key fob, it will increment to the next rolling code, invalidating the previous one, which could be replayed. In addition, most modern cars use encryption on their keyless entry system to prevent things like reverse engineering or brute forcing the rolling code algorithm. There are still some more complex attacks that can target rolling code systems. 
One common one involves jamming the signal near the car to prevent it from receiving the message from the key fob and incrementing its rolling code. This is a more complex attack and requires additional hardware other than just one SDR or a flipper zero. Nowadays, most car hacking thieves are actually exploiting vulnerabilities in proximity keyless entry systems with something called a relay attack. This is also a much more complex attack that requires multiple pieces of hardware to pull off. If you're interested in learning about these more complex attacks or other car hacking attacks, such as targeting the physical components of a car, make sure to drop a like or leave a comment so I know to make more videos on this subject. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching.